Okay, and welcome to this video module on co-simulation using HFSS eCAD, electronic CAD, and HFSS circuit. eCAD is also known as HFSS 3D layout. And in the previous modules, we defined the method of co-simulation as use of more than one simulation tool, more than one simulation type, such as electromagnetics and circuit simulation to describe some single complex system. In a different video module, we also showed how to use HFSS MCAD, the mechanical CAD solution or user interface with HFSS circuit. And in this module, we'll use the eCAD or the HFSS 3D layout with HFSS circuit to demonstrate the method of co-simulation. This module is part of a, a larger Series 3 ANSYS innovation course on the electrothermal mechanical simulation of a 5G smartphone. And in this series, we demonstrated the effects of the environment or the use mode of the smartphone antenna. And the smartphone as designed operates in an almost perfect 50 ohm system, but because it is a smartphone, we sometimes hold it with one hand or two hands, or we place it by the side of our head. And in this environment, the load impedance of that antenna is different for each use case. And the input impedance mismatch to the load results in an efficient transmission of the power, less radiated power. Typically, with the antenna, there's also an amplifier section. And the power that's reflected back into that power module can also cause even more damage. And to make the scenario even more complicated, the antennas that are used in a 5G smartphone are typically a phased array configuration, whether it's 1x4 or 1x8. And that means more than one antenna amplifier pair. And that means that have to be actively tuned and steered and each set for impedance matching of the pair itself, as well as the mutual coupling to the other set of antenna amplifier pairs. And as a result, we have a very complicated set, already complex system. One way of addressing this problem is to use a co-simulation. So let's take that patch antenna that we designed for 3.4 gigs using the antenna toolkit and we exported the DXF of that model geometry and imported it into HFSS 3D layout. Now, this is the electrical user interface to the finite element method full wave solver in HFSS. And in this model geometry, the model is layered or stacked up. It's a more of a, a planar type of stack up. And so starting from the bottom, we have bottom ground with one ounce copper, substrate uh, FR4, say 1.575 millimeters, and the trace again, copper, half ounce copper. And then we have a lump port to excite it. And now we're gonna analyze it. Set the frequency from 1.75 to 5.25 gigs. Go ahead and analyze it and compare the results to the MCAD model, same thing. Now let's go and push up the ECAD version up into HFSS circuit and the HFSS 3D layout becomes a sub-circuit inside of HFSS circuit, ready to connect the other electronic devices, your amplifier. And within this 3D model window, do a control D so you could see the actual model in the circuit domain. And so let's go ahead and add a port to this model, select the microwave port, use the edit port option by right mouse clicking on the inserted port, go ahead, flip the port vertically so that the ground is near the bottom of the schematic, create a voltage source, assign a soidal voltage port. Since we are using a microwave port implementation, make sure you edit the properties for this port and use one volt as the AC mag and set the frequency to 3.4 gigs. Add a circuit solution setup or a linear network analysis. Again, using that same frequency uh, range as in the HFSS model, 1.75 to 5.25 gigs and 0.05 gigahertz steps. Go ahead, analyze it. And again, when the analysis is complete, go ahead and view the results. Plot the return laws as well as the Smith chart response. And that should be the same, exactly the same as HFSS 3D layout model. Put a marker at 3.4 gigs. 
copy the curves, rename it to something that indicates what, uh, it's a 50 ohm system, like load 50. Now, they, yes, this is a very simple scenario. It's an isolated antenna element and not the antenna in the smartphone case with all the other electronic devices on it or any objects near it, my hand or my head. And so for simplicity, we're only going to use this element, but your HFSS model can also include all of these component parts that will cause additional parasitic couplings. So with that understood, let's go ahead and just add the load impedance. What's the range of load impedance from the human body? Well, there are some published data that says that the range of the values of the interaction of the hand and or the body can be in the range of 50 plus J 20 ohms or to 50 minus J 50 ohms. And again, this does depend on, you know, the power level as well as the signal frequency. But this is the range of the uh, uh, impedances, load impedances. So in HFSS circuits, let's change the port impedance of 50 ohms to 50 plus J20 and reanalyze it. See the changes in the return laws as well as in the spit chart. It's inductive. Copy and paste these results as before and use something like load underscore 50 J20. Do the same thing. Let's change the port impedance to J minus J50. Again, analyze, save the results. And again, as expected, Here's the three results seeing all three effects on one chart or the variations in response to the human body. So let's go ahead and use the Smith chart tool option from under the results tab for designing the matching network to create a conjugate match. And when the Smith tool dialog box appears, it shows the impedance grid and select the button named conjugate and select the 3.4 gig location. The circle appears and indicates that the conjugate point for matching on the Smith chart. Select the matching info tab and select the button new match and select the center of the Smith chart. Select the button new match to create some matching network configuration. And the number of elements and component scheme is left up to you, whatever your desired goal is. So our purpose is just to show the process. So let's use a minimum number of points to realize a match. And for this model, let's use a series L. Then we need a shunt L. And that makes sense. The content of a capacitance is an inductor. So go ahead and export this network. And this appears as another set subcircuit in the project here. Drag and, and connect the matching network between the port and the HFSS model. Go ahead, reanalyze and view the results. And you see, there is a change in the return loss and the input impedance with the matching network. Makes sense. Let's go ahead and push the excitation into the HFSS ECAD model for creating a dynamic link between HFSS ECAD and HFSS circuit model. The results for this particular setup are the same. From the planar model and the tune model, the tune model with the 50 minus J50 load impedance shown together here. So go ahead, use the 50 plus J20 load with the matching circuit and see a change there as well. So in this model, I showed you how to create a co-simulation project inside of AEDT using the HFSS ECAD model and HFSS circuit. We used a model geometry generated from the antenna toolkit, exported the DXF and created an HFSS ECAD or 3D layout model. Then we use the model for this simulation. It was based on the 5G mobile smartphone. And what we needed to consider was the use mode of the human body interaction. So we varied the load impedance to replicate the interaction of the human body. So we used HFSS circuit and we dynamically linked it back to HFSS ECAD. With the increased need to stay connected and the need to impedance match an antenna element the better the match, the better the performance of the antenna, which for the smartphone, the better the wireless connection. The method of co-simulation is increasingly of value for your design needs. And to find out more information about co-simulation or any other topic, check out our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com forward slash courses today. Thank you.